Welcome back to Dan91's Garage. This week we're going to continue work on the intercooler that we started last episode. It's only got two brackets holding it on, I've done one of the pipes. So there's plenty more work to go, see you guys in a sec. Just making up some intercooler brackets now, so you're going to need six of them in total. I've already got two rough ones on the car, but I need to stick these ones on it to stop it shifting about while I'm adding the silicon hoses now. So. It's a piece of 30 mil wide strip, two mil thick. I would have liked two and a half mil really, or maybe even thicker, but two mil bends up quite nicely when you're just hitting it in a vise with a hammer. So what I do is obviously mark off where your bend line is, and then I put the bend line on the side, I'm bending it. So at the moment we've got 45 and then 45. This is one of the lower mounts and this is what I need. So obviously set your bend line level with the top of the vise, but sometimes that can be a bit deceptive. So what I like to do is also put a square next to it so you can line it up next to the square so you know that it's 90 degrees to the top of the jaw that you're actually going to be bending it over give that a little nip up and double check it hasn't moved this one did so oh. looks about right so there we go nipped up in the vise normally it's a lot easier if this piece is a lot longer so you can obviously have a nice strip up here that you can help bend, but if you just bend it, it will just sort of bend anywhere. So you do have to tap it on the back with a hammer. So this is how I do it basically. So I'm just gonna hit it. And obviously the further out you hit it, the easier it will bend, the more leverage you have, but the more likely it is to actually bow this piece. So hit it kind of as close to the actual fold line as you, as you can basically. And then now it's over pretty much all the way hit it along the back edge really and careful not to go too far because you can actually quite easily overbend this past 90 so see how that works out oh not bad there you go the one they actually did on camera pretty spot on and also double check this way and as you can see because we trued it up before we bent it that's pretty much 90 degrees if you don't if you don't do it and you end up with your piece of metal in the vice like this you'll end up with sort of the other plange piece folded over at a funny angle like that and it's no real good to anyone unless that was what you wanted but there we go there's a there's one of them just got to shorten it up now drill the holes etc and then make another two for the middle but there we go that's how i make my brackets right so we need to sort of work out where the top bracket's going to be so i just used a folded piece of cardboard basically so sit that on the top of it and then using your finger sort of gently push down on the cardboard till it marks the ring then you'll end up with a sort of impression left on the back of it so you know that from this face to here is the depth you need for your bolt measure that up and then our cardboard template is fine so that's cool so that bolts up on that and we're on there so yeah basically i mean that's about 30 odd mil this section so 15 that way 15 that way then we'll have our mounting holes to go in the front bar. So I've got the original top mount off of it. Top centre this is now. I've done the uh, lefts and rights. So marked up where the bolt was, scribed a line across, measured it all up, transferred it onto my other one. So it's a piece of 30 mil wide, cold reduced two mil strips. So 30 divided by two is obviously 15. And because it's steel rather than aluminium, I also like to use a manual punch with a hammer. So, flat spot on the back of the vise. Find your centre mark from your other centre mark. There we go. Nice and solid. So when you drill these, obviously you're going to end up with a burr on the inside being pushed up and sometimes there's a small one on the side you're drilling as well. So the good thing about step drills is the next size up can basically be used as a countersink to remove the burrs. So all you've got to do is sort of gently tap it with the drill 
and it should get rid of them for you without having to switch bits. And as you can see there, taking the burr off completely. So this is the last one to go on now. The centre one is on the original M6 nut that's already in there from the factory that holds the uh, bonnet catch brace. So we're going to have to replace the bonnet catch brace with something. So what I'm going to do is obviously bolt this on. So these posts on the intercooler are 15 mil deep. So I've obviously got a 16 mil bolt, but we're taking out two mil for the bracket and two mil for the washer. So there's only about 12 mil actually sticking in there. If I could find the thread, there we go. So I'll just nip him up there quickly. Obviously we've got one bolt at the bottom and one clamp at the top currently. So if we just nip these all up. And basically hold these in place. And now these are gonna basically act as our drill guide. So the hole in the front here is six mil. So that's obviously, I didn't know if I was gonna go with, with either a sheet metal screw, which I know everyone gets a bit upset about, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna be as strong as a nut set, but if I was just mounting the intercooler here without having to use it possibly as part of the brace for the bonnet latch, I wouldn't have a problem with using sheet metal screws. At the end of the day, this is a sheet of metal and sheet metal screws are designed to hold other brackets to sheets of metal. That way you only have to drill a small hole in it and then put the screw in itself. So. It's not going to be as strong as if you use a nut cert, but being as I've got some nut certs and a nut cert tool and I've got the right depth, I mean, don't forget, nut certs are a certain depth and it may be that things like this bumper bar here that you're going into aren't actually deep enough to put one in anyway. So you have to choose correctly for the application. So M6 nut certs are maximum sort of strength you can get really when you're putting stuff into a piece of sheet metal. So we're going to use those. So what we'll do is get our wobbly as Makita and I know I have used this as a die grinder with a long burr on it but it was already doing this after not a huge amount of use I'll be perfectly honest with you so yeah that's something they could work on so six mil bit six mil hole so we'll pop the two in at the bottom first I think uh, and then we'll figure out how we're going to do the top because obviously this isn't going to fit in there so I might be marking this and taking the bar off and the screws that hold this bar on are like they've come off the Mary Rose. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, let's uh, very carefully drill a hole in this section. Obviously double check, there's no, there's no wiring running through this as far as I know. So something you've got to look out for. So yeah, hopefully this will work as a guide. And we'll be able to pop a nice hole through here. Yeah, that's come out sweet, lovely. And then pop this one the far side. There we go. Hopefully that didn't come straight through and poke a hole in the red. Sweet. Bit of WD-40 and some wire brush action seems to be doing the doing the business. So thankfully you can get to the back of the screw. So I'm cleaned off as much rust as I can and then lubed them up. And they're coming out okay. The good thing is you can get to the back of the nuts if these threads do get messed up. Then you just drill them out and put a nut on the back. So that's fine. So the nut certs need to have a 9mm hole drilled in them, so obviously this is even steps on this one. So we start off 4, 6 and then 8 and then we'll have to change bit, but we'll carry on with this. It's 
quickly deburr the top of them. Can't really get to the underside of it. I haven't got one of those hook deburrers and they only really work on the outside anyway. They don't do too much on the inside. So I think we're just gonna send it. There might be a small burr in there, but it should, should pull up and squash it fine anyway. So this is my nut set tool. I know some people just use a nut and bolt, but I didn't fancy buying the set that are essentially like a giant set of, it's like a rivet gun basically, but when you're putting in steel rivet nuts, they're actually quite hard to compress unless you get one with sort of massive handles on the two or the two handled sort of one. And being as I don't use them all day long, I thought I'd buy this instead. So essentially it's just sort of the main body of it is a nice machined up piece of uh, silver steel. And it's got a little counter sink or a counter bore in the end of it. And then you essentially got a very long grub screw that's 14.9 grade apparently and a coupler nut or a connector nut, whatever you want to call it. I had to add a chamfer to the bottom of mine because it was square ended and started to bind up the first few times I used it. But it's just nice to know there's dudes in sheds still building stuff on lathes. So essentially you get your nuts set. And obviously these are mild steel ones zinc plated with knurling. So we drop him in there. Like that. And then the 13 mil on the flats and a long 10 mil for the top. What I do, drop that on there and then you push down with this and that keeps it true because you don't want it going in on the piss. So you push down with that to keep it, keep it going in straight and then you hold it with this obviously to uh, resist the turning. So we'll give that a go. And you'll feel it start to uh, pull up the fastener. So we're already starting to pull in there. You feel it, feel it sort of touch down now on the other side. So we'll give them a little bit more tightening. I think that'll do for this one. So I'll undo that now. And I think I should unscrew from there. So there we go. One nut's uh, fixed in there. That's one in, two more to go here and then two on the car. So I'll carry on with that and I'll see you guys in a sec. So we've painted the bumper bar black. Obviously that's back on there now. We've also painted the front cross member. All the brackets are on and on every end apart from this one, I've given it sort of the biggest radius I can, which is pretty much a full end radius for this width of strip. Again, it just looks a lot more professional than if you have brackets that are cut off square and you just leave them square. Also it removes all the sharp edges and everything. So that's cool. They need painting, but I didn't want to paint them and then chew them up. Before they're going on, that'll be the last thing I'll probably paint as far as integral stuff goes. I did leave this one square here simply because this one actually sits onto the cross member itself. So I wanted as much surface area as I could have to help spread the load and make, basically make it a bit more stable when it's trying to move. Whereas all these other ones are sitting on top of a nut so, so they're sitting on the collar. So these aren't actually touching for quite a bit of the back surface area so there's no real need and it just looks a lot nicer anyway so so that's the intercooler on so we'll go and have a look at the uh, pipe kit and then we can get started with uh, the cold side of the piping I guess. My name's Dan this is Dan91's Garage don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode.